About six weeks ago, I made a video about using ChatGPT for translation. And I showed how, um, in the case of translation from Japanese to English, at least, uh, ChatGPT was a better translator than Google Translate or DeepL. The reason why was it is able to maintain the cohesion of the text. So it seems to know what the text is about to some extent. And for example, if a per certain person is being referred to, it will use consistent pronouns about that person through the text. While Google Translate and DeepL at this point seem to be translating sentence by sentence. And so in the case of Japanese, uh, Japanese to English translation, where the pronouns, the subjects might not be explicitly indicated in the sentence, it screws up. It, it, when, now this person is a he, now it's a she, now it's the they, now it's I. And so a few days ago, <laughs> OpenAI released the successor to ChatG which is called GPT-4. Um, and so I immediately started trying translation on it. And it's somewhat better. Um, if you've been following the news about GPT-4, it's better about a lot of other tasks as well, too. For example, writing computer programs and when asked to write essays and things like this, it, it can be much more sort of creative and, and, and things like that. So it's, 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 a, it's a surprising, shocking development in many ways. But in the, in the case of translation, um, when I tried it with literature, I tried it some passages from novels and some even some poetry, uh, it did pretty well, okay? And so it's, um, I, what I want to think about is, d does this change the landscape for the translation of, of literature, of fiction? Uh, so as I mentioned in the previous video, this was kind of a, an area forgotten by conventional machine translation. Um, the uh, machine translation developers were not even trying to develop um, uh, engines that could translate, you know, a story, a fiction, and and they're still really bad at it. In the case of Japanese and English, really, really bad. And useless in the sense that a person reading the output text cannot follow the story at all. So it's not just that the the, the text is awkward; it's incomprehensible. And so I, I tried a few cases of, of using ChatGPT for, um, I, you know, a couple of pages from a novel, and it's pretty good. Um, it reads very smoothly in many cases. Of course, with ChatGPT, the output is different each time you do it. If you change the, the prompt, it will, you will also get a different output. So sometimes the smoothness of the translation was a little bit, well, was maybe not as good, but um, it was good enough that I thought that as I mentioned in my previous video, that was some light editing, you know, so somebody, somebody kind of adjusts the prompt for the input and somebody adjusts the, um, the output, it might be possible to translate literature, translate fiction in a way that is enjoyable to read. So I, I think that even more strongly than I did six weeks ago with the previous um, example. So let me give you, I, I'll show you just briefly the, the two of the examples I did. One was a classic novel um, from more than 100 years ago by a famous Japanese writer named Natsume Soseki. It's a, it's a novel with the English title Gate or The Gate. And I just gave it the first couple of pages and um, I compared it with a translation by a human translator, a re recent translation by William Sibley. And well, to my eye, it's a matter of taste, which is better. So Sibley made some choices about how to translate certain things and yeah, GPT-4 GPT made some other choices and I think you know sometimes often I, I, I prefer Sibley's choices but I, I wouldn't say that GPT-4's choices of how to translate names and, and other things were wrong or were bad and I could imagine some human translators making the same choices. I showed that to some translator colleagues um, on, on an online group. And somebody asked a very reasonable question. Well, maybe GPT-4 was just using a previous translation of this novel, or even conceivably referring to summaries of the novel that exist online in both English and Japanese. Um, I don't think so. Okay, so the evidence I have seen so far of how chat GPT works, it's not plagiarizing text. It's it's stealing at a higher level. But, but it is a reasonable concern. So I tried it with another novel, one published last week, 
um, by a, a, a novelist named Murata Sayaka, and it was published in a literary, monthly literary magazine called Shinjo. And that magazine is published only in paper. And so it, I don't think the digital version is available anywhere. And it certainly hasn't been translated into English. I did the same thing. And to my eye, it's, it's, it comes to, it's, it's, I understand the story. I understand what's going on. Um, again, there are some choices. For example, in this case, there are some particular terms that are used that are uh, about things that are peculiar to Japanese culture. Okay, and so a, a human translated face is a choice when translating something like that. You just translate it as a direct expression. Year end soba. Will the English readers know what year end soba means? No explanation is required for, for Japanese readers. Do you have an explanation for that or not in the English translation? Well, that's that's a deep question, a serious question, an important question. Um, Chat GPT for this time did not add those those um, explanations. I, some people prefer that kind of translation. Um, uh, another human translator might add little notes, little explanations to make it clearer. Okay, but the point is. To my eye, at least, the, the, the basic quality of the translation is as good as a, as a human might do. And with some editing, some relatively mild editing by a, you know, a, a sensitive human editor, it could be turned into a novel that would be readable and enjoyable um, for the story. So why, why do I think that's important? Well, first of all, um, so I've been living in Japan for 40 years, and I've known Japanese for, for 39 or 38 of those years. And during that time, I've read a lot of fiction, a lot of Japanese fiction. And once I became able to read Japanese fiction in Japanese, I realized how little of it is translated into English or other languages. So um, if you are are outside Japan, or if you don't know Japanese and you're interested in Japanese writers and Japanese fiction, well, you have a, it looks like you might, you might look like you have a wide choice. You can read Natsume Soseki, you can read Murakami Haruki, you can read um, Midi Yu, um, uh, and there are others like that. There are other authors who are translated, but that's just the tip of the iceberg for for fiction in Japanese that is translated into other languages. So let me give you one example. This is a magazine. This is a, not the same issue, but the same magazine that, that a story by uh, Murato was published in called Shincho. Every month, this magazine is published. And it has, you know, a dozen stories, serialized novels, essays, and things like this. It's a huge amount of text. And the top, some of the top um, authors in Japan publish in this magazine. And this is one of more than a dozen monthly magazines of the same sort that are published, where they, um, and it, it, you know, maybe three or four of them are kind of aimed at relatively serious literary fiction, um, like often experimental fiction. Um, so somebody like Murakami Haruki has published in these sorts of magazines in the past. Um, but then there are others that are more, you know, more entertainment type story. You know, they they have historical fiction, they have erotica, they have um, stories into teenagers, they have stories about um, salaried workers working in Japanese companies and the issues they have in their companies. The romance novels, of course, is a big fiction. Those are just some magazines. Okay, Every, there's also another big genre called light novels in which, um, there, as it, it's, this is a Japanese term, light novel, but it means entertainment novels. And I was just looking at Amazon Japan, and it looks like about a dozen light novels are published every day. <laughs> so every day there's, there's, there, there are all, there's this huge, you know, bookstores are full of them, and they, they come through very quickly. And they have very, very, you know, clear, quick stories of all different types of genres, okay? And almost, well, only a, a tip of the iceberg of the literary fiction is translated. The entertainment fiction, close to zero. So unless something is connected to a popular manga or to a Japanese movie that, that, that is a hit overseas, um, none of that is translated. And so the reason it's not translated is, for human translators, translating a novel is a lot of work. Okay, to translate a 250-page novel, a Japanese novel, into English <sighs> would take months. Okay, and so... Uh, Basically, if you have to support yourself by doing translation, 
from Japanese to English, as I did for many years, um, it's not a reasonable choice to, to tackle that. So the, the fiction that is translated from Japanese to English is translated by translators who do it for the love of it, mainly. Okay, they like the author, they want to, you know, promote the author, they like the process of translation. But after spending six months or a year translating one of these novels, it might earn, you know, at most a few thousand dollars in many cases um, in royalties on that. Uh, unless, unless the book happens to be a hit, but that the very, very few are, are become bestsellers in other countries, especially in the English speaking world. And so um, it's a lot of academics who have, you know, other full time jobs that give them time to, to translate, who translate those novels. Or, you know, retired people, people with other sources of income, or f professional translators who do it on the side. Um, but it's, it's because, so because it's only can be done for the love of it, basically, not very much is done, okay? Not very much is translated. Another issue is the choice of works that get translated. So which, which, which will we translate out of there? Well, that's very much up to the author. It's also up to the publisher, of course. If a publisher wants to publish it, the publisher will have to think that they can make some money out of it, or at least break even. But then the translator, do I want to spend six months or, or a year of translating this novel? And so they choose works and authors that they like, that they're interested in, which is, which is great, of course. But what that means is that the vast volume of Japanese fiction of all genres is never read outside of Japan. Um, and so, what does that mean now? So that because there's a shortage of translators and because, uh, you know, the books sell, you know, they don't sell that well, right? So instead of devoting uh, six months or a year of human labor to translate them, would it be possible to translate them with machine translation, with G chat GTP4 or something similar to that? Um, and in a way that people would enjoy reading them. And so the answer is not clear yet. So I haven't done any complete works yet, okay? But my first impression based on looking at the results I've gotten um, in the last few days is that I could easily imagine um, doing that. And so I, and doing it in a, on a commercial basis. So I would imagine the workflow would be something like there would be a, a Japanese editor who would read the novel through and look at the things that will trip up the, the machine translation. So, for example, you, you have characters that exist throughout a novel. Sometimes a character is not really introduced until, you know, a middle of the novel, right? So you, you, you've probably read stories where it begins with I as a, as a narrator or he as the as as main character in the story. And it's only in chapter two or chapter three or chapter four that they say the person's name and they say what, you know, what, what the person's background is. And, and, and in the case of Japanese, the gender might not be clear. Okay, and so if you just set chat GPT to translating from the very beginning with no help, it might screw up a lot of that stuff, okay? And also there, there are things where, you know, the beginning of the, uh, of the story connects to something at the very end of the story, okay? And so if you're having, if you have to translate it in chunks, you know, if it only accepts, a, you know, 20,000 words or 30,000 words at a time, um, then you, you would, you could have some problems. So you have a Japanese editor read the novel. It takes, you know, five hours, 10 hours, and is noting things that, that have to be uh, caught by, and then writes prompts, writes the prompts in, in natural language, in either English or Japanese. Be careful about this. This author's name is pronounced this way. This, this character is, is female, things like that. And then you run it through the machine translation, which costs close to nothing and takes very little time. Um, and then, uh, you know, an English editor will read it and see if anything's strange. And if anything's strange, runs that passage through GPT again, or asks the human editor to, for advice or something like that. But that would also take a day, two days of, of an editor's time. And so rather than months, or in some cases years, being spent to translate a novel, there would be, it would be a few, you know, a week of, of human editorial labor, which would bring down the costs and would make it possible to translate much, much more. And so um, there's great literature hidden in, in Japanese. That story that by um, Murata Sayaka that I happened to have read it the week before. It was an intriguing story. It was an interesting story, kind of quirky. 
very thought provoking. Some of her works have been translated in English. Okay, there seems to be one or two translators who are like her and have been translating her. So maybe this story will be translated, but maybe maybe it won't be. Maybe it never will be. Okay, so it'll just be, it'll be lost to the non-Japanese speaking world. I would like to have to have somebody translate it. I don't have time or the energy to do that myself. So maybe things like that. And then there's all kinds of other genres. All this you know mysteries and 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 romance and science fiction and all kinds of stuff that, that is written in huge quantities here and that people might like to read and enjoy. And it could be, again, of course, it could contribute to global culture, it could be used as sources for, for, for movies and other kinds of things like that. So that's why um, I, I'm, I'm taking part in an online discussion group among professional translators and just as among, for example, professional computer programmers right now, software developers, there's a lot of both concern and controversy about what is the threat f um, to our jobs from, from these large language models. And some people don't see it as a big threat. They think that the higher level human skills, critical thinking skills, human sensitivity will never be, be replaced by these um, computers. Um, there are other people who are not so, sh you know, who are m more pessimistic or who are afraid of losing their jobs or, or maybe their jobs are safe, but many, many other people will lose their jobs. And so I think these, some professional translators, depending on the type of translation they do, I think that some of them have cause to worry about that. I think some types of, of translation will be taken over by machine translation. It already has been, some of it has. But I think the the, the volume of things that haven't been translated. Here I'm using fiction as an example, but there are many other things in many languages that have never been translated, that are, are never translated, that, that are valuable within their, their cultures and with those countries, and that would be potentially be of interest to people in other language communities, um, that well, now it's looking as though, yeah, machine can translation, translation could help with that. Um, it could, could, could help spread more across languages, not only Japanese to English and many other different languages. And so I, I, I made this video as kind of a, a little a light in the tunnel of the sense of, for those of us, including me, who are worried about the possible consequences of, of AI for, for human society and civilization, well, this is one area where maybe we will get some benefit from it. Um, one thing to keep in mind, of course, is that in the case of translation of literature, if it's, if it's you know, recent literature, if it's under copyright, you would have to get permission from the authors or the copyright holders before translating anything and if you were going to publish it. And so um, that's an important thing to keep in mind. I imagine some authors would not want a machine to be translating their, their text. Others would be happy to have it if it meant extra income for them. And so that's something to keep in mind. So, um, I, I, again, it's just been a few days since this was released. Uh, OpenAI has not yet released even the beta version of the API for GPT-4. And so that once the API is, is av are, are available, it will be easier to sort of automate the process of, of translating large volumes of text. And so um, we'll see. But as many people have noted, the pace of development of these language models and artificial intelligence in general is, is speeding up. Okay, advances are being made very quickly. So I encourage people who are interested in literature, fiction, reading books, reading stories, um, to, to look into this and see what can be done about this. And um, while, of course, respecting the, the copyright and, 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 and things like that as well, too. Um, and because it's, it's, there are a lot of possibilities there. So thank you very much for listening. Um, I, when, when I get another idea, I will make another video. So I, I, I'm very grateful for everybody who has watched and commented on the videos I've made so far. So, so long.